All right. Um, I'm going to ask you uh, if you guys can, some of you guys at least turn the camera on so that I can see your face. That would be awesome. Or I see some faces there. Thank you so much. It's so much better when I see your face when I preach. So it's, it's just so much better. So anyway, so thank you for all those who turned your camera on. And if you, even if you didn't, I still love you. <laughs> so anyway, so this semester and actually every semester that I, um, I'm with you, I always talk about the one topic, the same topic. I ask you the same question, which is, what does it mean to be saved? Uh, what, do you, what do you mean when you say you are a Christian? Uh, what do you mean that you are saved by grace and, and you believe in Jesus Christ? And what does that mean anyway? Does that mean that you just go to church on Sundays or you attend the service or you attend the ICC? Is that, is that all or is there more? That's, that's the question that we're trying to answer. And actually, that's the question I'm trying to answer with you guys. So um, when you say that you're saved, uh, you agree with me that means that you live your life as a disciple of jesus christ would you would you agree with that so if you're a disciple if you're disciples of jesus christ you all know the the great com commission and uh, uh uh that jesus has given to his uh, uh his disciples and we know that that we can find that in book of matthew chapter 28 it says all authority in heaven and on earth has given to me Jesus is speaking. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So basically, the, these verses are telling us being saved, uh, being a disciple of Jesus Christ means first you need to go you need to go somewhere jesus says all authority in heaven and on earth has given to me so like i am i am resurrected now i have all the power all the authority and i i'm the lord and i'm the rabbi i'm the i'm the teacher i'm the king that you're following then he says go so being saved means you need to go but many times to us, being saved means come to the church. You come to the church on Sunday mornings and you feel like, well, I have done I need, what I need to do. I, I've come to the service on Sunday. I listened to the sermon. I raised my hands and then I sang some, a few songs and I'm good. I'm saved. But Jesus is saying totally opposite uh, thought compared to what we have. He says, you need to go. Go, therefore. And he also says, you need to make disciples of all nations. So you need to share the gospel and you need to make other people and other nations disciples like you are. Meaning you need to make people like you are. Meaning like they, you need to make them disciples of Jesus Christ. How do you do that? Like you share the gospel, you, you serve them and you love on them. And, and, and like later on, you, you, you will see that you, you uh, show the signs and wonders. And that's all you like everything that Bible talks about. You need to go and make disciples. That's what it means to be saved. But a lot of times for us and to us, it becomes an option. Like this is for, you know, like for pastors and missionaries and, uh, so to speak, the special people in the church, they go and make disciples, share the gospel. But we ordinary Christians, what we need to do, we come to the church on Sundays, we give our tithe and, and, and we live as a good person and, you know, things like that. But that's not what the Bible says. And when we try to answer to the question, what does it mean to be saved? We should come up with the answers from the Bible. Not from our culture, not from what we learned from uh, somebody else and what we think what answer is. But we're trying to look into the Bible 
and try to find the answers of that question. What does it mean to be saved? And Jesus is giving us the answer today, tonight. He says, go and make disciples. Teach, teach them what I taught you, what I commanded you. Are we doing that? Are we? We need to ask this question seriously. Because at the very first service, you all agreed the most important question that we have to be able to answer before we die in this life is that question. What does it mean to be saved? Because that's going to decide which eternal life that you're going to have. That's more important than the money. That's more important than your education. That's more important to who to marry. That's more important to everything that you have in this life. But if the Bible is saying being saved, it means you need to go and make disciples and share the gospel and teach the people what Jesus had taught us, what Jesus commanded us. Are we doing that? Because all of you guys at the very first service, when I asked, are you saved? And most of you guys, you know, said yes. Most of you guys raised your hands. And I'm glad, I'm glad you did. But when you, it's one thing you say you're saved. But it's another thing you do what the Bible is saying. Because the Bible is telling us if you are saved, if you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, you need to go and make disciples, share the gospel, teach them what Jesus has commanded you. Make disciples like you are. Amen? Let's, let's ask the question. Just ask the question um, in, a, in, in an honest way. Like, are you really living this word out? Are you living it out? Because that's what it means to be saved. And that's, that's the great commission Jesus has given to us in the book of Matthew. But in the book of Mark, uh, the Mark writes uh, his gospel in, in, in a slightly different way, but same word. Same words from the mouth of Jesus, but he writes like this. In the book of Mark, chapter 16, this, these, these are the words from Jesus. Go into all, all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole world creation isn't it interesting jesus is not telling us to preach the gospel share proclaim the gospel to all people but jesus is saying that we should proclaim the gospel to the whole creation it's a whole different subject that we should talk about later on, later maybe in, in 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 other service but that's very interesting you know you need to preach the gospel proclaim the gospel to the whole creation that's awesome he, he keeps going, whoever believes, that's you. You are saying that I believe in Jesus Christ. I am saved because I believe in Jesus Christ, right? So whoever believes, that's you, and is baptized will be saved. So you are saved that you will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. That's you. You are telling me and you're saying that I am saved. I believe in Jesus Christ. And Jesus is saying, if you believe me, if you believe in me, if you're saved by my grace, these signs will follow you. These are the words of Jesus Christ. What does he say? He says, in my name, they will. Who are they? Those who are saved. Those who believe in Jesus Christ. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So what does, what is Bible saying? What does it mean to be saved? What's the answer? That Jesus is giving us. Jesus is saying to us. If you are saved. This is what it means. These signs will follow you. 
you are not following, you are not chasing these signs, but these signs will follow you. And what are those signs? You speak in new tongue. You cast out demons. You pick up the serpents. The serpents means uh, the, 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 the vipers, the snakes. You pick, up, pick them up with your bare hands and you'll be fine. You drink any deadly poison and you'll be fine. And you lay your hands on the sick and they will be healed. This is what it means to be saved. Is that the an answer that we have in our hearts and in our minds? Because if I ask you, what does it mean to be saved to you? That would not be the first answer that comes up out of your mouth. Once again, a lot of young people, like I've talked to a lot of young people, the usually first answer that they give me is that they go to church. But very interesting, what's very interesting that Jesus never, ever talks about going to the church or, well, at the time, going to the synagogue if you're saved. He doesn't. He actually says, go, go out. And the disciples of Jesus Christ, he, he gave a very special name to them. Do you know what that is? It's apostles. Jesus called his disciples apostles. What does that mean? The word apostle, the definition of that word, it means those, the sent out ones, the ones who are sent out. Me, they are, they have gone, they go out to the world. So actually, Jesus is defining his followers. The definition Jesus is giving us, are you my disciples? Are you saved? Do you believe in my name? That means you need to go into the world and do what? Baptize, they give, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Once again, interesting enough, guess what? Pastors are not the only one who, who can and who should give baptism to the people. You should give baptism to the people. Have you ever thought about that? That's what it means to be saved. You share the gospel. You teach them what Jesus has commanded you. And if, you, if they believe in Jesus Christ because of your words, because of your declaration of Jesus, and because of you sharing the gospel, what do you do? You baptize them. Not, in the, not only in the water, but in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's what it means to be saved. And also Jesus said what? If you believe in me, if you are saved, if you are disciples of mine, these signs will follow you. You heal the sick. You, 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 you perform the miracles. You cast out demons and you speak in new tongues. These are not my words. These are the words of Jesus Christ. But my question is, do we really believe that? Do we really believe we can and we should do those words Jesus has spoken to us if we are saved? Do we really believe that? Well, at least do we try to do what Jesus has commanded us? If you are saved, if you believe in me, you do this, these signs will follow you. In the book of Luke, uh, Luke writes another gospel, and then he writes same event when Jesus is uh, being lifted up. Uh, you know, he is giving us, giving his disciples a great commission. And in, in the book of Luke, it's uh, again, it's a different, different uh, the words Luke is, Luke is writing. And in, in the book of Luke, Jesus is actually telling his disciples, wait. In Jerusalem for what? So Jesus is giving this commission to the ones who are saved, so to speak. They are disciples of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is saying, go into the city of Jerusalem and wait until what? Until you are clothed with the power from on high. And as we know, 
in the book of Acts, chapter 2, that's Holy Spirit, His power clothing His people, giving a birth to the church. What does that mean? So, if you say, I'm saved, that means you need to be clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit from on high. That's what it means to be saved. This is not for some special people like pastors or revivalists or worship leaders, cell leaders or, or, or deacons and elders. No, it's for the believers, every one of you. Every one of you who are saying that you're saved. That's what Jesus is saying. If you're saved, you should be, and you should wait for it. You should wait to be clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit on high. To do what? To become what? In the Acts chapter 1, to become witnesses of Jesus Christ. You should be a witness of Jesus if you're saved. You know, as I said, when Jesus gave the name apostles to his disciples, that word apostle, it means sent out once. You need to be sent out if you're a disciple, if you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. You are sent out for what? To become what? To do what? To? Be a witness of Jesus Christ. You are sent out. That's what it means to be saved. That's what it means to be a believer of Jesus Christ, a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's very simple. The Bible is laying this out very clearly, very simply. But we just do not take those words as ours. Because even, even tonight, if I ask you, would you agree with these words? Would you say that since that you're saved, since you're telling me that you're saved, now go. go. Go to your classmates. Go to your professors. Go to your family members who are not saved. Go to your neighbors. Go to your city. And teach what Jesus has taught you. And share the gospel. If they are sick, Lay your hands on them so that they can be healed. If they are demonized, cast out demons out of them. If I tell you that's what it means to be saved, would you say, amen, hallelujah, I'll do that from, like, from now on. Like, I'll do that tonight. I'll go out. I'll, I'll call my friends. I'll, I'll go to my Moms and dads who are not saved, my brothers and sisters, my friends, all right, hallelujah. Now I know what it means to be saved. Let's go. Would you do that? A lot of times we don't. Why? Well, a lot of reasons. Like, well, I, I feel shy about it, or uh, I don't, uh, I'm not good enough. I, I, I don't think I'm spiritual enough. I didn't pray enough, or that's for the pastors, that's for the revivalists, that's for the preachers, like not for me. I'm, I'm good with just going to the church on Sundays and, you know, all these excuses. Sorry, but they are excuses. That's what they are. Because once again, these are not my words. These are the words of the Bible. And we're trying to find the answer to the very important question. Actually, the most important question in our life, what? What does it mean to be saved? Or should I say, am I saved? Are you saved? To find it out, we read the Bible. You want to know if you're saved? All you got to do, open the Bible and see what the Bible is saying about the ones who are saved. And then we read a very few verses out of many verses that the Bible is talking about. I'll ask the same question. Are you saved? Think about it. Please hear my heart. I'm not trying to condemning you. I'm not trying to point my fingers. Ah, you're not saved. 
You're not healing the sick. You're not casting out demons. That's why you're not saved. You're going to hell. That's, why, that's not what I'm trying to do. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm trying to do is let's be serious about this. Because if you're telling me, you've already told me, I believe, that the salvation of your soul is the most, most important thing in our whole life then at least we need to think about this. We need to be serious about this. We should be asking the question, am I saved? Am I doing what believers should do or what believers are commended to do so by the word of the Lord? Are we? If not, if not, we have to fit our life into the word of God. We can't try to fit these words into our life. We can't do that. We shouldn't do that. We have to adjust our life to look like what this book is saying. That's what it means to be saved. So, Being saved means you live your life as a witness of Jesus Christ and his gospel. How do we do that? We're going to look at three things and then we're going to finish the sermon. First, you live your life as a witness of Jesus Christ by your words. What does that mean? Uh, let me read a few verses from the Bible. Book of Romans, chapter 10, verse, verses 14 through 15. It says, what shall we say then? Uh, oh, sorry, not these verses here. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? So these, this verse is saying the ones who do not believe Jesus in Jesus Christ, for them to be for them to believe in Jesus, they have to hear first. And how are they to hear without someone preaching? So if they need to hear, there has to be somebody who preach, who share the word. And how are they to preach unless they are sent? But if someone wants to preach, if there, if there has to be a somebody who to preach, that somebody has to be sent out. And we learned tonight, what does it mean? Sent out, that's apostle, that's a disciple of Jesus Christ. And then who are the ones that have been sent out already? That's you. You have been already sent out because you say, you are saved and you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who are preach the good news. So first, for you to become a witness of Jesus Christ, you have to preach the gospel. You have to share the gospel. You have to talk to your friends, talk to your family members, talk to your people around you about Jesus, about the gospel of Jesus. You have to preach the gospel. That's how you become a witness of Jesus Christ. Second, you become a witness of Jesus Christ by, your the, by the power and signs and wonders of the Holy Spirit. We, we already read the book of Mark. Jesus said, if you believe in me, these signs will follow you. Meaning, you share the gospel, you, you, you preach the gospel by displaying the power and signs and wonders of Jesus Christ. You can't, you shouldn't, and you cannot lower this standard, even if you're not good at it. Let's say you tried. Well, first, let's try, guys. That's the first step. Let's try. If there is somebody who is sick, your friend, your families, 
whoever that is, try and list. Try lay your hands on them, pray for them, do whatever you can, and see if they're going to get healed. Because we believe in the word of God. The word of God said, I believe in Jesus Christ. And the book of Mark said, if I believe in Jesus Christ, they will be healed. That's the truth. So try. And guess what? Even if you suck at it, yeah, you are bad at it. Like nobody gets healed even when I pray. Guess what? That doesn't give you any right to lower the standard of the word of God. Still, still the standard is right here. You become a witness of Jesus Christ. You live your life as a believer of Jesus Christ by displaying the power and the signs and the wonders of Jesus Christ. That's how you live your life as a witness of Jesus. Third, you live your life as a witness of Jesus Christ by your lifestyle, by displaying a godly lifestyle. In the book of John, Jesus said, the people will know that you are my disciples. People will, like even if you don't say anything, you don't talk about Jesus, you don't talk about the cross, you don't talk about the church. The world will know that you are my disciples by what? When they see your love among your brothers. If you love your brothers, if you love your church members, if you love another believers with the love of Jesus Christ, you sacrifice your life for them. You give your life for them to serve them, to love them. The world will know that you are my disciples. So do you want to be a witness of Jesus Christ? You want to be a believer of Jesus Christ? You're, you're a, you're a, you want to be an apostolic disciples of Jesus Christ? Then, then, three things. You live your life as a witness of Jesus Christ by your words, preach, by preaching the gospel, and by displaying the signs and wonders and power of the Holy Spirit. And third, by living your life, like, like live your life, a good godly lifestyle. Love other believers. Love, the, the, you know, like sacrifice your life for them. Serve them. Then the world will know that you are the witnesses, you are, you are witnesses of Jesus Christ. This is what it means to be saved. Once again, I'm trying to, uh, I'm not trying to point my fingers, finger at you or even at myself like, oh, we're not doing this. We're not praying for the sick. We're not casting out demons. So we are not saved. Oh, we're, we're doomed. We're going to hell. That's not, that's not my point. My point is I want us to change our paradigm, our our thinking, our, our thoughts. Because throughout our whole life, we have thought going to the church is enough to be saved by his grace. But we just read a few verses in the Bible. That's not what the Bible is saying. Being saved contains so much more than just going to the church. Don't get me wrong. Going to church is not a bad thing. You should go to church. You should become a part of the local community uh, of believers if you're saved. Because that's what the book, book of Acts is talking about. The book of Acts, the church gathered together regularly to listen to the word of apostles and, and, and break the bread together and, and worship Jesus and pray together. So we should become a part of, of church, of a local church. That's great. But that's not everything. Actually, that's a very, very small part of what it means to be saved. We read the book of Mark, a book of Matthew chapter 28, book of Mark chapter 16, Luke chapter 24. And we read Acts chapter 1 and 2. 
And Romans chapter 10, what is it saying? If you are saved, you go. You preach the gospel. You teach the people what Jesus has commended you. You heal the sick. You cast out demons. You perform the miracles. You preach the gospel. Because people need to hear the gospel to be saved. And you make disciples. And also, you preach the gospel to a whole creation, not just to the people. That's what the book of Mark said. See, salvation of your soul contains so much more than just going to church on Sunday mornings. So what I'm trying to do throughout the semester is I'm trying to expand your thoughts. I'm trying to challenge your thoughts. And at least think about this, meditate on this, because you told me that salvation of your soul is the most important thing in your life. Then take time to think about it. Take time to study about it. Take time to pray about it. Take time to meditate about it. Start it tonight. After this service, take 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and pray to Jesus. Jesus, what does it mean that I'm saved? What does it mean to live my life as a witness and disciple of Jesus Christ? Teach me. Show me. Talk to me. That's what I'm trying to do with you guys every time I preach at ICC service. Would you guys do that with me? I'm doing that with you guys. I'm asking the same question to Jesus Christ. Even though I'm a pastor, I'm, I'm just one of you. I'm, I'm a believer of Jesus. So I always try to check my heart, check my thoughts. Jesus, am I living my life as a disciple of Jesus Christ according to the word? Not according to my culture, what I've learned or what I think, but according to the word. Am I living my life according to the word? Let's do that. That's what it means to be saved, guys. Trying to live our life according to the word. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. That's, that's the message that I want to share tonight. So let, let me pray for you guys. Jesus, we want to live our life as disciples of Jesus, as witnesses of you, Jesus. But your word says, it means we need to go. We need to go to our friends. We need to go to our family. We need to go to our campus. We need to go to our cities and share the gospel, preach the gospel, teach them why you have commended us, make disciples of all nations, heal the sick, cast out demons, perform the miracles, and be clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit from on high. That's what it means to be saved. So Jesus, we want to live our life according to the word of God. So Holy Spirit, tonight I pray, expand our minds, expand our hearts, and help us to pray about what it means to be saved. Pray about it, think about it, meditate about it, study about it, God. Ask you in our prayer. So that we may live our lives as witnesses of Jesus Christ. To make disciples of all nations, God. So once again tonight, I pray, challenge the hearts and thoughts and minds of our young people tonight. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.